A 60-year-old woman with type 2 diabetes and arterial hypertension suddenly developed a fever yesterday afternoon with a body temperature over 39 degrees Celsius, rigors and violent chills. She vomited at least 4-5 to five times and today her right calf started to hurt, soon becoming red and swollen. The diagnosis couldn't be clearer. It's typical erysipelas. High fever, rigors and general symptoms appear first followed by local signs of infection or inflammation, most commonly on one of the lower limbs. The doctor admits the patient to the hospital and start treatment with antibiotics. Now, which antibiotic would you choose here? A. Vancomycin B. Piperacillin tazobactam C. Cloxacillin or D. Septriaxin Feel free to pause the video to think. Well, if you've gone through my course on antibiotics, you will know that erysipelas is almost always caused by streptococci, most commonly group A streptococcus, the same one that causes strep throat. Whatever beta-lactam antibiotic you choose, you can't go wrong because this bacterium is always susceptible to all penicillins and all cephalosporins. But if you want to use antibiotics wisely, as I hope you do, you should select the narrowest spectrum possible. In this case, that would be cloxacillin. Let's take a look at the table of penicillins from my course. Cloxacillin is an anti-staphylococcal penicillin that specifically works against streptococci and meticillin susceptible Staphylococcus aureus. So, it has a very narrow spectrum. Honestly, with erysipelas, you could even treat it with simple natural penicillin G, an even narrower spectrum penicillin. But antistaphylococcal penicillins are also an excellent choice because theoretically erysipelas can sometimes be caused by Staphylococcus aureus, so with this drug you cover both. Other antibiotics from this group are simply overkill, and vancomycin, despite its broader spectrum, kills susceptible bacteria much slower than penicillins. So, the most rational choice here is definitely cloxacillin. And okay, the doctor starts treatment with cloxacillin. However, after two days, another doctor examines this patient's leg and concludes it doesn't look good. The skin is dark red, even darker than before, with signs of bleeding within the skin. The patient is now afebrile, not vomiting anymore, and the leg is slightly less swollen than before, but the skin really looks terrible. So the doctor orders a CT scan to look for abscesses or dead tissue, but apart from edema, the scan finds nothing. Now, what should the doctor do? Should he replace cloxacillin with another antibiotic, and if so, what antibiotic would that be? pause the video and take a moment to think. Well, with erysipelas and cellulitis, the local findings often appear to worsen before they improve. After 2-3 to three days of treatment, the skin may appear darker, possibly with signs of intradermal hemorrhage, and it will likely shrivel and resemble the bark of an oak as the edema begins to recede. Know that this is perfectly normal. As long as the patient is stable, and has become a febrile, and there are no signs of local complications such as necrotic tissue or an abscess, meaning something that requires surgical intervention, this is completely normal and there is no need to change the antimicrobial regimen. This is just how a erysipelas responds to treatment. So don't overreact and switch to, I don't know, meropenem and vancomycin. A few take-home messages here. Erysipelas starts abruptly with general symptoms and local signs typically appear later after 6-12 to 12 hours. It is almost always caused by streptococci and will respond to any beta-lactam, so be reasonable and choose a narrow-spectrum drug like an antistaphylococcal penicillin or pure penicillin if you are sure that it is erysipelas. Don't be alarmed if the local findings are not pleasing after 3 days. They don't have to be. If the patient's fever has dropped, if the patient is stable and there are no signs of local complications, that is normal and expected. This is the kind of stuff you will learn in my online course on antibiotics. If you use antibiotics in clinical practice, take a look at this course. I hope I see you there. Take care.